Trevor, this is a quite remarkable mm. uh, story which is unfolding before our very eyes. French police have opened an investigation into Pogba's cl uh, claims that he's being threatened, he's being targeted for extortion by gangsters. Now, it, w it would seem this is getting a bit more dangerous, if you, if you like, a bit more dark, this story, before it's going to get any any lighter. Um, it really is a very odd sequence of events. Earlier on, again, I spoke to our French football expert, Julien Laurent. It involves a group of people, including his brother, and now the authorities are involved in both France and in Italy, all very cryptic, a message that uh, his brother Matthias put out online promising great revelations about the, the now Juventus star. So I said to Julian, unpick this for us. What's happening? It is both complicated and, and really incredible when you think that the heart of it is that basically his older brother, one of his older twin brothers, Matthias Pogba, has been trying to extort money from him. It's as simple as that and trying to blackmail him. We saw on Saturday night a video from Matthias Pogba on social media saying that he had revelations to make. And now I know that he could maybe make them on French television anytime this week about Paul Pogba, that people we, we, that will change the, the perception that people have of Paul Pogba around the world. Then Paul Pogba responded with a statement saying this is not a surprise, doesn't come as a surprise. There have they've been a, a, an attempt of extortion from an organized crime which had Matthias Pogba in it. So in the group of people who tried to get money out of Paul Pogba, Paul Pogba went to the police. There's an investigation going on, both in France and in Italy. Uh, those people have been threatening him a few times in the summer after he's moved to Juventus, for example, and, and things like that. So it's crazy to think that a family that was so united, so tight, growing up, and even up to a few months ago, their the father passed away in 2017, for example, that brought them closer even. But in the last six months or so, it really has exploded. Pogba said that they tried to come and get some money of him. They've asked for 13 million euros, one three, uh, for some sort of protection that they've been giving to him for many, many years between his brother and some of their, their childhood friends from the council estate where they came from in, in Paris. Pogba said they never asked for any protection. There was no, there was no protection. But now they, they're asking for that money. Um, some people turn up at his house with balaclavas and, and guns, for example. They, he was taken uh, to a flat in Paris with people that he didn't know the last time he was around back in March. So things like this, which is really Hollywood stuff. This is like yeah. movie things. And now this is involving one of the, the, the biggest names in football. There's also potential revelation about the fact that Paul Pogba tried to do witchcraft against his own teammate, Kylian Mbappe, to, to put a, a curse on, on his, in, on his uh, uh, French teammate, which Paul Pogba denies it completely. So again, we're waiting to see what happens on, on that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really, really crazy. As you say, Julian, it's like the stuff of Hollywood. Having said that, it's dangerous stuff. Could this end in an ugly fashion? I think it can. I think it can. You're right. Uh, we've seen it in football before because there's so much money and they, there's one thing that can break up a family. It's money even more, especially when we're talking about those kind of amount and those kind of, of wages and incomes. I think Paul did the right thing by going to the police. I think at that time that was the right thing to do. We don't know exactly what Matthias Pogba has in terms of what he can reveal and what the proof that he has and what he wants to announce, really, that's the next big chapter. The police seem to think that there's not much in the attempt of extortion, that he didn't really go that far and that I'm, I'm not sure what the next chapter in terms of the investigation and maybe charging people and taking people to jail is about. The police didn't seem to think that there was much in it anyway. But still, now it's all out. It's the Pogba's name. It's Paul Pogba who's coming back from an injury, trying to get fit. And it's a race against time to be fit for the World Cup for France. He still hasn't, hasn't played a single, single minute with Juventus. So this is just another chapter of, like we said, quite a crazy story. What are people saying about it in France, Julien? It's the big headlines, of course. L'Equipe newspaper today, Le Parisien, all the, the TV news and the radio news, trying to find out a bit more... What's in it, really, in, in, in what kind of circumstances he was threatened, in what kind of circumstances they, they tried to get money off him. We know that, um, like a lot of footballers, Jim, you know, like me, you know, a lot of them often have some of their childhood friends staying with them, sometimes for forever, sometimes on short periods. Their house is always very open to those childhood friends or so family members who are not all families. And apparently one of Paul's friends 
sort of like stole 200,000 euros from him from one of his bank cards that he found in the house. So things like that, that I think Paul found out quite recently that he's obviously not, not happy with. So we're just waiting to see exactly what the investigation will come out with. But for Paul, it's, it's really the last thing that right now he needed, to be fair. Julian Laurent speaking to me mm. earlier. I mean, Trevor, with friends like that, who needs enemies? But by the sounds of it, this is a quite remarkable story. It is. Sounds like some kind of um, film. Um, I think the old adage, more money, more problems, springs to mind because I've had it in my career. When you start earning money, people change. I mean, Simon, you'll probably have seen this yourself. Um, and it, it can be difficult. And at times, you have to stop knocking about with certain people. And uh, it seems like this possibly should have been one of them instances where Paul's got people knock, knocking around him that he shouldn't allow to have knocking around him. But I remember when I was, what, 22, 23, I'd been at QPR a few years, I'd just got a new contract and everyone seems to know about players' contracts now and it was a it was a big bump up on my last contract. But I thought, you know what, I want to get it out of the way. I'd rather have, I invested it into a house for my mum, a house for my two sisters, and then I was back to square one. You know, just living my life, training hard, trying to get in the team, trying to play well for Queen's Park Rangers. Nothing flash, nothing no, showy. Absolutely. No, but I think no. players now, the, the the levels that they're at, it's a, you're talking about £200,000 mm. being taken out of an account. Well, it impacts, I can't even get my Trevor head says, it impacts your circle of, of people who are around you. You made £100 million plus when you were 30-odd. Yeah. You got, you got so to, you, did you see the changes? You, yeah, of course you do. But you've got to take responsibility for the position that you find yourself in life. You know, you can go and buy big cars and you can go and buy lots of bling or you can take responsibility for the people that are in your life and ultimately the protection of your own assets. Bottom line is, I don't understand how, how someone could get access. First and foremost is banking requirements. You can't just transfer 200,000 euros between the accounts. The banks will intervene and stop you from doing it. So c curious to see how that's done. But either which way, what an unpalatable, unedifying set of people mm. to have around you and one of them being your own family. Mm. I mean, how worse, much worse can it get? I mean... Don't let's make this the reasons why Paul Pogba needs to be given excuses for not playing football very well, because we all have challenges and, tra and tra travails well, in no our one's, life. No one's really saying that. No, but there's a backstory to this, which people will say, you never know what's going on in someone's life. Well, no one ever knows what's going on in someone's life. It doesn't, it shouldn't affect their ability to do their jobs. Did you have people, Simon, who behaved very differently? Yes, I had you. people that behaved atrociously at who times. Who you could trust before, but couldn't after that. Yeah, my, my, best, my best friend, people will laugh at these stories, my best friend stole two million quid from me. My second best friend stole a million and a half from me because I trusted and believed in them. Maybe um, that's what Paul did with the 200 grand. Sure, yeah. maybe. Um, and of course, you find that people How'd take... How you stole two million from well, you? Well, I had a, situa I had a situation where somebody did something for me. I repaid it when, before a situation um, when I came into, into the money that I was coming into. They asked me for a similar favour and they nicked the money. I was put in an invidious position because I had, they had done for me, so I could not not do for them with a similar situation a little while later, except they were a liar and a degenerate drunk and stole my money. And then eight years later, my closest friend, the godfather to my daughter, did something similar. So with that in mind, I was a soft touch for very close people in my life because I believed emphatically in the value of friendship. You so get I understand money back. that. No, gone, done, dusted. And you know, and and and, and some of those things you have to li live with and think to see Jesus Christ, a fool and his money are lucky enough to get together in the first place. But Paul Pogba has got to, you know, be protected from the wealth that he had now has, but protect himself. These guys are in a situation now where they're global superstars, they're iconic images in people's minds, and by the same token, there are people that are looking at you with, covered, with eyes that covet what you've got. So you have to... Mm. Now, tragically, if it's your bloody brother, <laughs> what yeah. do you do what in that circumstance? You, you get rid of them got? from your life. But he needs to get the police involved. He needs to get private security. These footballers in this day and age, they, they do this ridiculous notion that we need to tell people what we're getting paid on a weekly basis. No other industry does it. I don't know why we do it. Who cares that these guys are getting 400 grand a week? Who cares? For some reason, we seem to. Mm. But the bottom line is there needs to be a bit more confidentiality around it and a bit more responsibility, like the dreadful situation happening to Bamiang in Barcelona. You're going to have to put security guards on your house. You can afford it. I'm it's a tragedy. It, I'm surprised you're going to have to do I'm not, it. I'm surprised it's not happened more before now because if you, if you want to do something, if you're one of these people who, who uh, are looking at, say, mugging someone or robbing someone... You've got the timetable there. You just look at the fixture list. When's he away from home? When's he, when's he flying Trevor, out? Trevor, when you look at these quads, what the hell does his brother appear to have in him? 
Well, well, I mean, that's a different question. Of course, it is. Yeah, it could, it could be anything. It could be anything. But and the other side of this argument is, you do have to perhaps behave yourself in a fashion that doesn't that put, doesn't put you beyond reproach or puts you beyond reproach. Sorry. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't live your life privately. And you should be out if you if you've earned the money. You should be able to spend it and yeah. have nice cars. After your experience, is it hard to trust people? Simon. Uh, yeah, after having like an enormous amount of money, well, to us it is it. Well, of course well, it's you know a, a reasonable million. amount of money. Yeah. But you know, but so when someone takes two million off you and somebody does the same. And the and the oh, you, 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 know, you, have a, you have a word with yourself, don't you? You say for me once, shame on me. For me twice, shame on you. But the other way around. Bottom line is, is that you do every experience in life. Come on, Jim. Everything you do, you know, from working with good people, from working with bad people, you take something from it. And of course, it does make you more cynical. But mm. these boys are in a they're in a goldfish bowl, and sometimes they put themselves there because yeah. they want to be there. Yeah. But that does not mean that people would have the right to take advantage of it. But it is also the reality of the world that we live in. So you're going to mm. have to. You get your bottoms wiped every day. You come to football well. clubs. You've yeah. got player liaison. Get player liaison to sort out every aspect of your life because it will suit but you anyway. That, that is, there's trust in that. It's sad though. Well. It is sad, but it's a fact of life. Martin Anglesey is being very cheeky. I'm not sure that I believe Simon's story about friends stealing millions from him. He's Pleasure. never had any friends. <laughs> no, <laughs> now that is true as well. <laughs> no, you've got they're, they're now become acquaintances. You've got two friends sitting in this studio with you: Jim White and Trevor Sinclair. You do God know yours twenty quid each. I've hit rock bottom now. If that's the <laughs> case. It's eleven thirty. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.